How do I find the centroid? I heard from you. Yes. Uh, isn't it like <coughs> one third of? Uh, isn't it based on divided by one third? Well, well, you, well oh, you're yeah. right. One third of b uh, is yeah. the same as b to over three, right? <laughs> so one third of b is right, yeah. and then we also would do one third of h, right? So we do one third of this and one third of that. Okay. Now don't get scared when you say ten divided by three and your calculator spits out three point three repeated. Everyone gets little, sometimes they're a little intimidated by lots of decimals. Okay. Just right. Let's go three point three, right? say for tenths for now for the purposes of this, this thing, right? Now I said 3.3. .3. One thing I forgot to say, it still works. But one thing I forgot to say is that we want the centroid location for number two. We want it based off of this number. When we do the calculation, the centroid relative location is based off of that point. Okay? So it still works when it's horizontal, 3.3, .3, right? It'd be one third along the way. This is still the same distance here as it would be here. Okay? So that still works here. However, for the vertical location, which is which, what, what, by the way, what's one third of three? It's one, right? So I don't want to write one there. However, I also need to consider that we're starting, we want to go from this point here, the seven, okay? So really I want to write the number eight because seven plus one is eight, okay? So I would write eight here. Because that centroid location is based off of the same point of reference at the bottom left there. All right, so I've got the information I need. I've got the areas and I've got the centroid locations. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and set up my AX and AY, okay? So my sum of AX, and my X, I shouldn't say that as a subscript, my fault, okay? It should be A times X sum of AX, AI, XI, and my sum of AI, YI, okay? Now, I've got two shapes. So I'm going to do two calculations for each one. I'm going to have an AX calculation for each shape, and I'm going to have an AY calculation for each shape. So in this case, I've got 70 times 5 for the first one. And 70 times 5 is 350. I'm doing this unit list right now, just so you know, just uh, in case you're wondering why I'm not writing answers or anything like that. I just want you to focus on the magnitudes and the actual calculations. Okay? But in reality, if this was regular linear units, this, then this number would be the cubic unit of that. So if this was meters, this would be meters cubed. If this was uh, inches, it would be inches cubed. So, like, so don't worry about that. But right now we're just focusing on the numbers. Okay, so we got that. And then we're going to do the second one, which is the 15. You know what I should do? So I'm going to make a minute. slide that here. I'm going to write this in blue instead because it makes more sense. It's okay. It's coming back. People are furious. No, why, are they, why are they erasing it? No, so I'm just trying to color code this, the shape, right? Shape, the blue shape here. And I probably should have just put that stuff here. Blue. There we go. That's better. Okay. So what happens when I try to color code. The second shape is the triangle, right? So that's 15 times 3 and a third. That's 50, right? I believe it's 50. 15 times 3 and a third is 50. Okay. All right. So remember, these are the two numbers we need. For late. Now for the A, now for the AI, YI calculation. Same deal, same area, times the Y coordinate this time of the centroid. So for the first shape, we're going to do 70 times 3.5. And 70 times 3.5 is 245. All right. And then the second calculation is the area here for 15 for the triangle. We're going to multiply that by 8. So 15 times 8, that's 120. Okay. So again, here's the two numbers we need, 245 times and 120. Now the last thing we're going to do, and, and, and the uh, activity does a good job of organizing this data for you. It has you, it has you basically add up a couple of columns because you need those columns to do the final calculation. So we add these two numbers here, and this will be our sum of AIXI. And then these two numbers added up would be our sum of AIYI. We then would take those numbers, and we would divide them by the total area. So I'm sorry, I keep doing that, my fault. AIXI divided by the area of the whole thing. And what does that work out to be for the x coordinate? Let's do that first. So we add up 350 and 50, and that's 400. 
So it's 400. And then what's the area of the whole thing? We didn't calculate that already, but if we took the two shapes originally, it was 70 and it was 15. That's 85. And if we do 400 divided by 85, it's going to be a little less than 5. I'm estimating in my head here. I believe it's 4.9, but somebody live can calculate that for me and make sure. Maybe it's 4.8, but I believe 4.9 is accurate or close enough. Okay. So we did 400. Right, we added 70 and 15 to get 85. And we added the 350 and the 50 to get 400. 4.7. 4.7. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that. 4.7. So not bad. Two tenths is pretty good for the mental math, right? Okay. And then let's do the same thing for the AY. So the sum of AIX, uh, sorry, AIYI divided by A. And then we just, again, that's just achieved by adding these two numbers, right? So 245 and 120 is 365. And then we would divide by the total area, which is 85. And that's going to be a little more than 425. That's going to say 4.2. That's my guess. Someone's going to calculate that and uh, we'll correct it if needed. I'm going to guess it's about 4.2. Shouldn't it be the same thing? Should it? If 365 divided by 85 is not the oh, same wait, as 400 mind. by 85. And the reason why it's not the same is if you look back at the shape, it does not have a 45 degree line of symmetry. Okay? Like our other example. Our other example had the same height overall and the same length overall, which means that it was, it was symmetrical along a 45 degree line. When that happens, the centroid would have equal x and y coordinates. Okay? But this time it's not. 10 is longer than you know, 7 that way. This is a triangle here, so this is certainly not symmetric on a 45 degree line. Um, so we would not get the same numbers for our x and y. Can we scroll okay. up? Sure. So, but, but, so at the end here, right, so we got the, we got the sums, we divide by the total area, we get a number for each x, we get a number for x, and we get a number for y, and that would be our composite centroid location. So our final answer is going to be 4.7, 4.2. So our final centroid is something in this neighborhood here. Okay. 4.7, 4.2. That neighborhood. Okay? So, you know, when it comes down to calculating centroids of composite figures, the more shapes you break it into, the more calculations you have to do, but you really are doing the same thing each time. 